corrupt free to win GE50. I said rally proof government upholds democracy. Hello and good afternoon. I'm Mohana Priya. Welcome to News on 2. Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahdi Mohamad said Pakatan Harapan can win a second term in the 15th general election if it stays clean and not fall for corruption. He added that all component parties in PH as well as its ally, Party Warisan Sabah, were chosen by the people in GE14 to be the government because of their stand against corruption. Dun Dr. Mahade, who is also PH chairman, said that the coalition was chosen as they were free of corruption and thus this should be maintained to continue earning the trust of the people. Dan kita juga ingin supaya rakyat sendiri menolak cara-cara rasuah untuk mendapat sesuatu daripada pihak pemerintah ataupun dalam urusan-urusan yang lain. Inilah perubahan Yang ketara, yang besar, yang dilakukan oleh kita, kita melakukan, kita mendirikan kerajaan yang bersih kerana rakyat nak supaya kita menjadi bersih. Tun Dr Mahathir said this at the PH Charity Dinner 2018 at the Putrajaya International Convention Centre. He added that although the country is recovering from its financial problems, the people are currently yet to enjoy the fruits of the recovery. Meanwhile, Tun Dr Mahathir said that in order to obtain government funds, the ruling coalition had to use the old way to collect donations, which is through a charity dinner. He said the event was held as he did not want money to be collected through corrupt means. Pakatan Harapan ini perlu menentukan segala yang dilakukan olehnya bersih daripada rasuah. Tidak ada cash is king. Pegangan kita kepada janji-janji yang dibuat oleh kita walaupun kadang-kadang janji itu begitu sukar untuk dilaksanakan tetapi akhirnya kita akan tunaikan janji kita kepada rakyat untuk memulih semula negara tercinta ini, negara bertuah ini, negara yang dahulu dikenali sebagai harimau Asia. Malaysia will be a peaceful, strong and united country if the government can fulfill the aspirations of the multiracial society in the country, especially the majority of Malays. PKR President Atuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim said that in doing so, other races would not feel discouraged if the government leaders responded positively to the community. Datuk Sri Anwar, who is also Pakatan Harapan leader, said that the government will not ignore the demands of all races and the rights of the people, even though the claims are from the minorities. Harapan yang menggunung itu perlu dikejar, perlu disempurnakan, dan kalau ada suara gelisah dari kalangan rakyat perlu ditangani dengan baik dan dengan sabar dan dengan bijaksana. Tidak dengan cara gopoh dan kasar seperti yang nak berlaku yang lalu. Datuk Sri Anwar said this at the Pakatan Harapan Charity Dinner 2018 held at the Putrajaya International Convention Centre, PICC, in Putrajaya. He also reiterated his stand to always support the leadership of the Prime Minister, Tun Dr. Mahdi Muhammad, to ensure that the change in the country will be done in peace without problems among the PH coalition. And on a related note, Home Minister Tansri Muhyiddin Yassin said the Pakatan Harapan government in allowing the anti-international convention on the elimination of all forms of racial discrimination, I said to proceed without any hindrances in the federal capital, is proof that it upholds democracy and freedom of expression. Tan Sri Muhyiddin, who is also Parti Pribumi Bersatu Malaysia or Bersatu President, said, while some had claimed the rally was a setback to the government, it is in fact showed the direction the new government was taking in upholding laws which give the people the right to assemble peacefully and express themselves. Ini membuktikan bahwa Malaysia baru di bawah pimpinan Pakatan Harapan yang dipimpin oleh Yang Amat Muhammad Tun Dr. Mahathir 
yang didokong oleh rakyat menjunjung prinsip demokrasi. Hak rakyat untuk bersuara tidak kita tahan dan kita sekat dan kita telah menguruskan segala urusan-urusan berkenaan dengan perhimpunan itu berdasarkan kedaulatan undang-undang. Kuala Lumpur Police Chief Datuk Sri Mazlan Lazim said the rally ended without a single untoward incident taking place unlike at several assemblies that took place when the Barisan National was in power. Malaysia decided not to ratify the ICERT to uphold the federal constitution and defend the social contract entered into by the races who joined together to form the country. Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Wan Aziza, who was also chairman of the organizing committee, said a total of 1.665 million ringgit was collected through the sale of 156 tables for the Pakatan Harapan Charity Dinner 2018 at the Putrajaya International Convention Centre. The Pakatan Harapan president said the charity dinner was to collect funds transparently, which will be deposited directly into Pakatan Harapan's bank account. Commenting further, Datuk Sri Wan Aziza said this is to ensure that Pakatan Harapan does not use government funds for its political activities. Tujuan utama menganjuran majlis makan malam amal adalah bagi mengumpul dana secara telus dan berintegriti terus ke akaun Pakatan Harapan. Kita mahu memastikan iltizam Pakatan Harapan tidak menggunakan dana kerajaan untuk aktiviti politik kepartian dapat dilaksanakan. The guests of honour were Prime Minister Tun Dr Mahathir Mohamad, who is also PH Chairman, and wife Tun Dr Siti Hasma Mohamad Ali. Meanwhile, a number of portraits of the main leaders of PH were successfully sold to the highest bidders with a hefty amount totaling 1.22 million ringgit. Communications and Multimedia Minister Gobin Singh Dio has been appointed as the new chairman of Selangor DAP, replacing former chairman Tony Pua. He was among the 15 candidates who garnered the highest number of votes to be elected to Selangor DAP's executive committee lineup for the 2018-2021 term. The new executive committee members reached a consensus to appoint Gobin as the new chairman of Selangor DEP and Sri Kembangan Assemblyman Ian Yong Hian Wah as his deputy. Speaking to reporters, Gobin said he would pay heed to the voice of the grassroots and build solidarity. The Puchong Member of Parliament said his main task is to listen to what the divisions want, adding that together DEP members must build Selangor DEP to be strong to face the challenges ahead. Only 756 out of the 1,092 delegates eligible to attend the convention turned up, with 40 candidates were in the fray for the 15 positions up for grabs. The Sabrang Parai police busted a human trafficking syndicate with the arrest of three Myanmar nationals under Ops Pintas in Butterworth yesterday. The victims, who were Myanmar nationals between the ages of 19 and 50, were found hidden in the upper room of a house at Taman Teratai Mamandin, Butterworth, unkempt and lifeless. Sabrang Parai Utara District Police Chief ACP Nur Zaini Mohamad Nur said the two men, aged 35 and 45, and the woman, aged 41, who were arrested, acted as caretakers of the house in Mandin, where the victims were kept. Also seized in the raid were a black waistband, multiple keychains, three mobile phones, several bank cards, notebooks and cash worth over 1,800 ringgit. The investigation found that all the victims were locked in the last 10 days after arriving in the country. The Myanmar nationals were promised work as soon as they reached Malaysia. However, the promise did not materialize. The case is being investigated under Section 26A of the Anti-Trafficking in Persons and Anti-Smuggling of Migrants Act 2007. The victims were also questioned as they did not have valid permits. Coming up next, government to propose new KPI for civil service. Stay with us. Now, a new key performance index or KPI will be proposed in order for better evaluation and implementation of the civil service delivery system. Chief Secretary to the Government, Dato Sri Dr. Ismail Bakar, said the new KPIs will see a wider or 360 degree perspective for a better assessment of the public sector. Datu Sri Ismail said that the government was still exploring the possibility of coming up with the proposed new KPIs for ministries and all government servants by taking into consideration all aspects, including public perception. 
Kita akan tengok lah. Kita akan tengok more 360 degrees uh, apa nama performance. Performance yang uh, uh, persepsi rakyat tu untuk ministry ke untuk minister? Semua lah kita tengok. Untuk... Selangor State Development Corporation PKNS has allocated over 462,000 ringgit for the refurbishment of 16 residential houses belonging to the severely poor. PKNS Chief Operating Officer Norita Mohamad Sidi said the corporation will continue its commitment to helping Selangor residents through the Corporate Social Responsibility or CSR program which is branded under the name Kasih PKNS. The refurbishment process of these homes have commenced since early July 2018. Uh, process baik pulih itu adalah membaik pulih rumah-rumah yang dah uzur, yang telah bocor, ya, yang mana tidak selesa lagi didiami. Uh, jadi kami dengan kerjasama bagian lembaga zakat dan juga uh, uh, pejabat daerah mengenal pasti mana-mana rumah yang perlu dibaiki. Jadi program ini telah berlangsung selama enam tahun setakat ini dan PKNS telah pun membelanjakan sebanyak 2.9 juta untuk tujuan tersebut. Dan tahun ini adalah giliran daerah gombak lah untuk kami membuat kerja-kerja baik pulih seperti ini. Elaborating further, Norita said PKNS will also give school assistance to about 2,000 students under the seriously poor category with an allocation of 149,000 ringgit. Meanwhile, Selangor Zakat Board Chief Coordinator Abdul Basit Hamid said a new mechanism will be set up in the search for the recipients in the state. To date, 600 million ringgit has been raised for the charity. Japan's strong confidence in the leadership of Prime Minister Thun Dr. Mahdi Mohamad will lead to financial aid packages to Malaysia, including the issue of samurai bonds. Japanese Ambassador to Malaysia Dr. Makio Miyagawa said this would not only help reduce the high financial burden Malaysia is suffering through its commitments by the previous government, but would invite renewed Japanese investors to make a return to Malaysia. Dr. Makio said talks between Malaysia's finance minister Lim Guan Eng and himself had reached agreement on the issuance for the 10-year yen-dominated bonds worth 7.4 billion ringgit expected to be issued before March next year. He also disclosed that the second pillar of the financial package would come in the form of the Japanese government's official loans to fund some sizable projects and programs with low interest rates and long repayment periods, including for some educational and human resource development programs. I think the Ministry of uh, Finance of uh, uh, Malaysia has already agreed uh, and is very uh, is moving towards uh, issuing yen denominated uh, bonds in Tokyo market so as to uh, uh, <coughs> ensure uh, good resources financial resources uh, to uh, uh, replace uh, a very high interest rate uh, loans uh, which uh, Malaysian government has uh, suffered uh, through uh, uh, well in the previous administration. Commenting on Malaysia, he said Japanese companies had hesitated to invest in recent years due to the political turbulence. However, after the 9th May general election, Japan's investors have started to cast a fresh look at investing in Malaysia and have been positive. The envoy attributed this trend to the policies of the new Mahathir administration that commits itself, among others, to transparencies, justice and the rule of law. International oil prices rose today, extending gains from last Friday when club manufacturers of the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, or OPEC, and non-associate producers agreed to reduce supplies starting from next January onwards. Brent benchmark futures stood at 61.81 US dollars a barrel, up 14 cents or 0.2 percent as compared to the previous close. Now, oil prices showed a positive trend over the past week after OPEC and non-OPEC producers, such as Russia, announced they would reduce supply by 1.2 million barrels per day. The reduction of 800,000 barrels per day will be made a member of OPEC and the remainder of the reduction of 400,000 barrels per day by non-allied countries. Now, previously, the Ministry of Economic Affairs, Dato Sri Azmin Ali, also announced that Malaysia agreed to reduce the amount of oil production by 15,000 barrels per day as compared to the previous 20,000 barrels, which ends by the end of this year. 
The decision of proof of Malaysia's commitment to international cooperation to address the economic challenges facing the global market. Airlines Air Asia will provide promotional tickets for the fans of the Malaysian football squad Harimau Malaya to fly to Hanoi, Vietnam for the final of the AFF Suzuki Cup on 15th December. This is aimed at providing the players with the support needed to carry home the cup. Its Group Chief Executive Officer Tan Sri Tony Fernandez said this initiative is taken to allow the die-hard fans, especially members of the Ultras Malaya Club, to provide the national players with the morale boost needed during the match to win the title. He added that the number of flights, however, depends on the approval from Hanoi Airport's authorities. Important how we do on Tuesday. If we do well, then I think many people want to come. Tansri Tony said this after attending the Executive Talk Air Asia from Zero to Hero program at the University Sultan Zainal Abidin held at Kuala Nuru's Trunghanu. Air Asia had recently provided a special aircraft to ferry Harimau Malaya supporters, especially members of the Ultras Malaya Club, for the second leg of the semi finals at the Raja Mangala National Stadium in Thailand. National badminton ace Dato Lee Chong Wei has announced that he will be resuming training in January next year. Chong Wei, who is recuperating after being confirmed free of level 1 nose cancer since July, admitted that he still had to undergo the recovery process in Taiwan. Uh, saya mahu condition saya and uh, because saya after the treatment uh, bulan 7 uh, sekarang sudah 5 bulan yeah and totally stop in uh, the training, I think not easy want to come back. I think uh, more important uh, slowly and think on same condition much and uh, because start in the May 1st is a qualify for the Olympics at 2020. He said this when met after signing a contract as an ambassador for an isotonic drink yesterday. At the same time, the winner of the silver medal at the 2016 Olympics in Rio also could not confirm his participation in the 2019 All England Championship in March. For the record, the last time Chong Wei performed at a competitive level was at the semi-finals of the 2018 Indonesian Open in July, which saw him losing to Japanese player Kento Momota. Now, the National Junior 7 squad once again proved they are right there with the best in the region when it comes to age group competitions. After winning the Asia Rugby Under-18 Championship in Johor Bahru yesterday, the squad opened their campaign in the round-robin format competition with comfortable wins over Hong Kong 31-5, South Korea 47-5 and Laos 53-0 at the Edu City Stadium in Nusa Jaya. The young squad then secured victory thanks to wins against China, 19-17, Qatar, 34-0, and Uzbekistan, 40-0 in their last three matches in the competition. It saw them ending the tournament with a 100% record with 18 points. In total, they scored 224 and conceded only 27. China and Hong Kong ended the competition with 15 points each. China, however, ranked second thanks to a better score difference, while Hong Kong settled for third. National Juniors had in the past won the 2011 and 2012 Asia Rugby Football Union under 20 championships, which had also been held in Johor during both years. Many of the players from the 2011 to 2012 under 20 squad had gone on to play for Malaysia at the 2015 Singapore and 2017 Kuala Lumpur Sea Games, where the team won silver and gold respectively. And in bowling news, national professional player Ahmad Aidil Abdul Halim, 22, exhibited an exceptional performance after emerging runner-up in the Masters event at the Masters Bowling Championship at Sunway Megalane's Petaling Jaya yesterday. The Kuala Lumpur-born, who dominated the qualifying round, lost 193 to 203 and 187 to 257 to former world champion Cho Yong Seon of South Korea at the step ladder final action. National elite player Mohamed Rafiq Ismail, who was still fresh with his success after winning the World Championship in Hong Kong recently, ended the competition in third place after losing in the semi-finals action to Cho.
As champion Cho took home cash, 40,000 ringgit and championship trophy, while Ahmad Aidil and Mohamed Rafik reaped 20,000 and 15,000 ringgit respectively as a runner-up and third-place winner. Ahmad Aidil was clearly ecstatic with his success, despite failing to win the championship, which also had women participants. The championship was also viewed by participants from abroad, such as the United States, Singapore, Hong Kong, Australia and Indonesia. And that concludes this afternoon's news on 2. In our top story today, be corrupt free to win GE15. Join us again at 7 this evening. I'm Mohan Priya. Thanks for watching.